That's where I get my Latin flavor from, bro. <laughs> si quieres, hablamos en español. Ah, si claro, quieres, un poquito de los dos, eh? Claro que sí. Stop at this coffee uh, place. It's called Tim's or Sim Tim something Hortons. Tim Hortons? Yeah. Don't say that. You disrespect Canadians. <laughs> oh, I'm so that. sorry. Listen, man, say it I again. don't want you to find out the hard way. No, I'm no. not Canadian, but I'm just saying I said the same thing, Tim, whatever, whatever. And they're like, oh, oh okay. Like, don't Thank do you. that to us. Thank it's you Tim for pointing Hortons. it out. Tim Perfect. Hortons. I'm Manny Levarbier. I cut up a lot of famous soccer players. Now, I'm going to take my barber shop to a few of them. Doing. My brother, I'm doing great. How you good doing? See you. Good, good, good. Can't complain. Good to see you. You ready for a uh, for a haircut? I'm ready, man. That's right. Don't mess up my beard, man. Nah, I would never do that All to right. you. <laughs> I'm not known for that. <laughs> How was the pressure? Uh, just at age 16, here playing at the MLS. You know, you're coming in. You're a young kid. How did you deal with the pressure? Man, I was just having fun. I, I really don't think. And what we do, there's a lot of pressure. We go out there, we kick a ball. Sure, there's pressure, but there's real pressure for other people, you know, police officers, lawyers. That's that's pressure, man. You're defending people, you're saving lives and that kind of thing. You know, we, we get to play a game. That's a good point. Yeah, man, when you do it, when you do this for a long time, people keep, you know, you get to think about that question a lot. And then you, you break it down to the bare bones and you realize there's not really any pressure. I consider it as a privilege and a fun privilege at that, to be honest. So. I see you got pretty good style, man. I see, I see the way you dress. Uh, yeah, man. I, to me, when it comes to style, it's all about you. It's all about what you feel comfortable in. It's all yeah. about what you're going after and what, what you like to wear and what you like to look like. But for at least for games, I like to come in, you know, making sure that I respect the job and coming in something a little bit different. And look, like I said, it's a show what we do. So it's cool to be a part of the show. Yeah. Man. Anytime I go through tough times, I think about my parents and what it must have been like when they came here. Where are they from? Yeah, parents are Haitian. Haitian and my mom's uh, half Dominican. Yeah, they came to the States when they were like 23, 24. No English, nothing, no friends, wow. nothing. So we talk about the American dream. I mean, they live in proof of it right there. So what struggles did they, did they have coming over here? Like, Yeah, I mean, it was tough for them because they were escaping the, the rule of Papa Doc, who was, uh, a president in Haiti uh, basically was going around killing his own citizens if you oh, didn't wow. if you didn't follow his rule, and so they had to escape that regime, and they were able to to come to New Jersey, and that's where I was born. They met on a bus there, and then the rest was history, as they say. My parents they came pretty much to the desert, and they had to cross over here too uh, back in the 70s, and it was pretty hard for them. I can definitely relate to you know your your story. Our parents just go through through a lot, you know, just to get here. And when you have parents like like ours, you, you kind of learn how to separate things and kind of take the sting out of some things and understand. You're, you're able to look at the bigger picture. You know, obviously, you get to fulfill dreams as a player, but I think when you have opinions on different things, people listen. People are curious to see I think more than just the athletes. So, how do you use this platform to, you know, to shine light on others? You know, when I, when the earthquake struck in Haiti in 2010, I just saw that as an opportunity. You know, I was only, I was 19 at the time, and it's tough because that's an age where most people wouldn't be thinking about that. Or, you know, that's how I've always been. I've always wanted to to help people that that need it. You know, and and that was a time where the the country was in disarray, and I felt like, what good a time is then to to start a foundation and and try to help give back and, and, and get them whatever assistance they needed at the time. And I'm very lucky to, to have the platform that I do have because it's easy to kind of get people to stop and listen, but that's one thing. The, the next thing is making sure your idea is really helping people and, and that the gain is for the less fortunate. So. so why Toronto? Like what, what made you choose Toronto? You know, for me, Toronto is like the best kept secret in the world. I didn't really have an idea to come back to MLS at that point, but okay. the project of Toronto and, you know, go out there and, and make the city, you know, fall in love with a winner, fall in love with a team that plays a style of soccer that replicates the type of city Toronto is, you know, diverse, you know, we mix it up, got players from all over. And I think you saw that from the team that won the treble in 2017. It was something that's never been done in the league. You know, the best team to play in the league up until this point in terms of what we did that year. So it was a mission complete in terms of what we all came here to set our minds to do. All 
All right, Josie, check it out, man. What do you think about it, brother? It's good, man. Clean me up cool, nice. Cool. I appreciate you. Yeah, it looks good. All right. Thank you for coming by the shop. Thanks for having me, man. Anytime. You are welcome. Uh, awesome. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Hey, blessings, bro. All right, man. Stay up, all right? All right, man. Take Thank care. Thank you.